we want to continue this week um, with with serving and actions, and the whole idea is is that being generous is more about uh, just money. So, so often when we talk about generosity and let's be generous this season, we we look at what's in our pocketbooks. Like, okay, how much money can I give out, and and where can I send my res- my my monetary resources? But generosity goes beyond just the money piece. Generosity goes, it's, it's about getting our hands dirty. It's about going to places that nobody else will go to and, and talk to people nobody else will talk to and do things that nobody else will do. And, and that's what the power of generosity can do. Uh, we, as I mentioned, um, had all 11 boxes were funded by you guys. So generosity was displayed in the fact that somebody in this church gave $10, gave $25, gave $50, whatever it was towards these Thanksgiving baskets. That's generosity. And then we see people giving up of their time to come out on Tuesday to help pack these boxes. I think we had 12 people on Tuesday show up. Some were there the whole time. Some were there for a couple of hours as time allowed. But the the bottom line is, is when generosity was needed to be displayed, when it was needed to be displayed, you guys stepped up and came and, and helped out and did your part with your time. So we have we have generosity being displayed with money. We have generosity being displayed with time. And so people came and packed and we did all this stuff. We had a great time and we laughed and Kelly threw a towel at me because I fake dropped her bad cookies, you know, when I really was just wanting another cookie, even though Thanksgiving was around the corner. And so it was amazing. Debbie brought a bunch of decor and decorated the boxes so they didn't look like I just went to Lowe's and brought a whole bunch of boxes home and packed. Like, it was amazing. The spirit of generosity was alive and well. But then there's a third step. Then there's that step where you have to go to places that nobody really wants to go or go talk to people that nobody really wants to talk to for a variety of reasons. Maybe it's um, uh, because of insecurities or fear or what might happen when I go there or what might people say if they see me or a whole variety of things. But the idea is that generosity is more than just one thing. It's several things. And you guys demonstrated that beautifully over the last several weeks. And so, like I said, I want to say thank you for that. But the idea this morning I'm trying to get across is that being generous is more about money. It also includes getting our hands dirty in service to others, just like Jesus did. Jesus, when he was born in a manger, was born in a manger so he can demonstrate what it's like to serve. The Bible says he didn't come to serve or to be served, but to serve and gave himself. Jesus went to places and had meals with people that nobody on the planet would ever think of having meals or visiting. Why? Because he had a heart of generosity. He realized he was here for the people around him, not for himself. He fasted. He did all sorts of things so he could position himself Let's remember, although he was 100% God, he was still 100% man. So he still had the whole, uh, he still had the whole impact of what you and I experience, what you and I feel. But yet he also had an understanding of his mission here on earth. And his mission was to serve everybody around him. Even to the point of mockery. Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. How dare he go hang out with Zacchaeus? Do you know what that guy does? Do you know what that guy says? Do you know what he's done to Christians? Like the stories go on and on and on. That's just one. But yet that's the very person Jesus came to touch and to minister to. And so in the spirit of generosity, God is asking you and I to go to that person that has been rejected by community and society and their family and the world around them. That's, that's who God is asking us to go to. Now comes the, you know, We put our money where our mouth is. Yes, God, I'll do whatever you say. But will you? When it comes down to it, will you reach out to that person? Will you go give that person a hug? Will you? Because too often we we put excuses before our actions. Well, I don't know what to say. Or I'm not good in that area. Or I don't know uh, 
how it will appear. Like we have all these different um, excuses. But how many of you know, maybe, just maybe, that Zacchaeus in your life just needs a hug. Just needs to feel like they're accepted. And that's what I love about the songs we sang this morning because it was talking about the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus is here without condition. Like, you don't get to experience his love uh, if you do X, Y, and Z. He loves you no matter what. Scripture says in Jeremiah that he foreknew you. Before you were born, he knew you. Before you came into this world, he knew about all the stuff you were ever going to do, all the stuff you were ever going to say, all the struggles, all the heartache, all the pain, all the times you were rejected by your family or rejected by man or rejected by society. He knew all that, but he still came to love you and let you know, I've got a plan for you. And this is why you and I are here on planet Earth, is to demonstrate this very idea to the world around us. Amen? Before we get too much farther into this, I want to I read you something that Bernice, when she was getting ready, had this scripture going. And, and it's about the, if you can go to your Bibles with me, actually, in Matthew 25. We're going to start in verse 14. It's not up there, Bob. Don't worry about it. Um, and it's kind of getting a little off track, but I just felt so strongly that I wanted to share this with you guys this morning before we got too, too deep into it. And it's 25 verse 14. It's about the... Parable of the talents, we all know it. Uh, it says, to one he gave five talents, to another, or, and to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went at once and traded with them and made five more talents. Monies of gold or bags of money is what these talents are referring to. So also... He who had two talents made two talents more. But the one who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Why? There was fear that overtook his life. What if I fail? What if I do this? What if I do that? But see, God is not worried about the what if. He's just worried about what will you do with it. That's what God's worried about. And so when he's, when he's calling us to be a church of generosity, when he's calling you to live a life of generosity, when he's calling you to a life of service to the community around you, it's not about the end result. It's about what you will do with what you've been given. See, the one guy went from five to another five. The one guy went from two to two. The one guy had one and buried it. It's not about the outcome. It's what you do with the things that God has placed inside of you to serve your community, to reach your area for Jesus. Watch what happens. Now the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Verse 20. And he who had received his five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you delivered me five talents. Here I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done. Well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Verse 22. And he, all, and he also, who had the two talents, came forward and said, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. It's not about the outcome. It's what you have done with it, the response from the master was the same to the one that went from five to five as it was from two to two. Your giftings and your abilities and your talents is exactly what God needs to touch the community around you. It's exactly what God needs to touch your family, your friends, your coworkers, your schools, and beyond. Don't limit yourself because you can't do X, Y, and Z well. Don't limit yourself by comparison and say, well, that person has all these giftings and all these abilities and I only have this one thing. God is only asking you to use the thing that he's birthed inside of you. He's not asking you to try to muster up five more talents that you weren't given. He's asking you to say, look what I've placed inside of you. And here's the thing. He knows you better than you know yourself. 
He's not going to give you something if he thinks you can't handle it. The things that you've been given are there because he knows you can handle it. I'm not called. I'm not good enough. He, does, he didn't come for the well. He came for the sick. He's going to call and equip those that he has called. And he's equipping you right now. Let's continue. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little, and I will set you over much enter into the joy of your master. Verse 24. He who also had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. Everybody say, I was afraid. So I went and hid the talent in the ground. Here is what is yours. Now, I'm sure in this, in this uh, servant's mind, he was thinking, well, he's going to be happy with me because even though I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, double it or bring back more, at least I didn't lose it. At least I didn't do something foolish. That, that's the thinking in, in his mind. But listen to the answer. You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my then I ought to have invested my money with bankers. At my coming I should have received what was mine or what was my own with interest. So he took the talent from him and gave it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has uh, more has been given, much uh, sorry, for to everyone who, who has will be given, and he who has why can't I read this right now? <laughs> You get the idea. Too much is re-given, much is required. That is the idea of it. And here's the thing about generosity. That was really weird. I literally could not see the words. Um, God is giving each of us talents, giftings, and abilities. The problem is, is we look at what we've been given and we look at the job that needs to be done around us and we get fearful. And we begin to say, God, I can't because that person or, or I, I can't because I don't speak well. Or can you, can you imagine if, if uh, Moses allowed his speaking to keep him from doing the calling that God has placed on his life? What would the story be? Remember, he said, God, I don't speak well. I'm not a man of of good words and good communication. Like, I don't know what you want me to do. He says, you're not sending yourself. I am is sending you. And so when it comes to going to places where where people are afraid to go to or it's dirty or it's unclean or it's unsure, we are often uh, like the servant and we we say, oh man, I'm afraid what might happen. What if I don't come back with with an abundance. What if I just come back with one? And so what do we do? We bury our gifts and, and we say, somebody else will do it. But God didn't call you so that somebody else can do it. God called you so that you can do it. Why? Because he, he believes in you. He's appointed you. He's, he's put his hand of grace and of mercy on your life. For such a time as this, it's not about what people around you might say or might, or might uh, view you as or what it is. It's, it's about just doing the will of the Father. Because there's, there's a world around us hurting. There's a world around us that is, that is dying and, and searching for something to, to, to reach out to them and to, to know that they're a part of something and know that they are accepted and know that they are loved. But if we let fear keep us from doing that and walking that out, nobody's going to ever minister to him. Scripture that I've got written down here is out of Mark 10, 35 through 45. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we'll pick it up in um, verse 43. It says, instead, whoever wants to become great among you. Remember the disciples say, Jesus, when you're in heaven, remember me and I want to be on your right hand. The other one says, yeah, I want to be on the left hand. The idea that Jesus is trying to communicate here is that 
people are jockeying for positions. They, they take their power and they try to elevate themselves. And, and Jesus is trying to paint the picture. It says, instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Too often we look at the status of people, their money or their house or their car, and we elevate them. And But Jesus is saying, if you want to be great, you got to serve. If you want to be great, you got to go to where nobody else is going. If you want to be great, you got to do the things that people are refusing to do. This is the, 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 how you become great. It's not by the amount of money you give. Remember the story in the Bible of the woman who, where Jesus is at and all these people are dropping loads of cash in the offering bucket and she comes and gives her two mites. And what does is, what is Jesus say? He pulls his disciples here and says, see that woman right there? She gave more than anybody here. Because she gave out of her lack. It wasn't about what they had. That It was about where their heart was at. And Jesus is saying, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, if you want to be great in the world, you've got to do what nobody else would do. And serve. You've got to take the things that I have given you, the, the, the abilities, the giftings, all that stuff that you have from me, and use it to serve others. Use it to, to minister to others. And we, we talk about the same stories all the time because it's, it's, so, it's so true. Like you have people going to the mission field, to places. Like we, talk, we hear some of Gary's stories. Like I would never go to half the places Gary, go to, Gary goes. Because there's, there's a level of fear that I have when I hear he's going to these places. Like, but God has, God has put something inside of him. And because of that, he recognizes it and he's saying, the only way for them to know is if I go. So what does he do? He goes. Like the last testimony he shared, he talked about this car he was riding in and they were following this other car and the dude was standing there with some automatic weapon on the back of it for protection. Like there is nothing in my mind that shouts, Josh, do that. Like th there's no ways. I remember when I was going to South Africa for the first time. I had only known Africa by National Geographic Channel. I was petrified. I was scared. I had no idea what I was doing. And I remember sitting in my, my pastor's office. It was a Wednesday afternoon. I was leaving Thursday morning. Wednesday afternoon saying, what if I get lost in the airport? I've never flown by myself. What if I get lost in this airport? What if I, what if when I get to, to South Africa, they're not there to pick me up? Like, what do I do? He says, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. I said, no, I, you know what? And I said to him, I, I'll never forget this conversation. I'll never forget this conversation. I'm sitting there just bawling in tears. Like I've never cried before. I said, you know what? I'm done. I am not going. He says, your dad's going to kill you. I said, I really don't care. I'd rather be dead here then go there and come back alive. Like, I am that scared right now. There's no ways. And he looks at me and he says, why are you going? Why, why are you going in the first place? I said, well, because I feel like this is what God's asking me to do. It's going to be a great experience, see what church life is like, and get my hands in it. And he says, so why are you so afraid? Do you realize if you don't go, how much you're, you're missing out on? Rewind to, to Thursday, and I'm sitting in the airport and still crying. I don't think I'd stop crying from the time I left his office. Little did I know what would happen while I was there that I would have missed out if I would have said, I really don't care what you're telling me right now. I'm not going because I'm that afraid. The obvious piece is I met Bernice. That's the obvious piece. But internally, God did so much. I experienced so much. I encountered so much. And the things I would have missed out on by letting fear overtake my life because I did not want to do what God was asking me to do. I was too afraid. Being generous is about pushing all that stuff aside 
saying, here I am, Lord, send me. Because I just want to serve. I just want to do whatever it is you're calling me to do. Whatever it is you're asking me to do. No matter my limitations, no matter my strengths, no matter my uh, insecurities, whatever it might be. Because at the end of the day, I knew it wasn't me choosing to go there on my own strength. It was God sending me. I just simply responded to his voice. A couple of years later in South Africa, for those of you that know about South Africa, Kelly and um, Debbie know about the poverty in Africa because of their time there over the summer. But there are townships of the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people that live in these, these huts. Uh, no bigger than um, a broom closet in your house. And it's not just one in there. It's, it's multiple people in there. But there are 50,000 in this one particular community. And Bernice's sister had this vision to go do outreaches to this area, serve food and clothes and medical and, and all this stuff. And we were part of the family, so naturally, here we go with. But we're not just there in the morning at daylight. We're now there at dark. And you want to talk about fear. And I had to be persuaded to come along. Like Bernice's sister was all in, Bernice was all in, her family was all in, the church that was kind of partnering with us was all in, but I was so scared. Let me tell you something. When you begin to take the supernatural saw that you and I have been given and begin to saw down the boundaries that we put up in our life, push it through and step into what God is doing, you have no idea what can happen. The heart's that we saw minister to, the lives we saw touch, the people we were able to hug, and like stories that we have from that time are incredible. Why? Because we, we pushed the boundaries. Nobody set up the boundaries. I set up the boundaries. I said, that is scary. I don't know if I'm going to come out alive. I've never been out of the country. I've never done that. So here are my walls, God. Here's what you can do with me but I'm not going past it. If I let fear of serving keep me from using what God has given me, I wouldn't have met Bernice. I wouldn't have had the encounters and the experience in South Africa that we had. That we had. But it was all because we eventually tore down the walls and stepped out. It didn't matter what people thought. It didn't matter what people said. It didn't matter where we were going. It didn't matter what the smell was. It didn't matter what they looked like. Because there's something that happens when you say, here, let me pray for you, or hug, or give something, and their faces light up with joy. And you're like, that smile, it was all worth it. That tear was all worth it. That experience was all worth it. What God is asking you and I, His church, this morning, and it's sad that it comes up in this season. You know, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, it's the holidays. It's, it's where everybody worldwide, saved or not, begin to rise up and do things for people around us. But he's not asking us just to look at this time of year. He's asking us to remember year round that you have a gift. You have a talent. You have an ability. Start using it. Start pushing the walls aside and, and begin to multiply it. God isn't asking you to do anything he doesn't believe you're capable of, which means you're fully capable. If God's given you a talent of, of generosity through hugging, start hugging. If God's given you the talent of generosity through baking, start baking. If God has given you the, gen, uh, the spirit of generosity through hospitality, be hospitable. There are things that you have in your life right now that will minister and serve people in a way that you have never expected. You tell them when they ask who sent you, I am, has sent me. Moses did not go on his own power or his own might or his own ability because if he did, he would have failed. But he says, God, I cannot speak well. Who shall I say is sending me? The great I am is sending you. That is what you say. The rest is history. 
The freedom of God's people became a reality because Moses put aside his discomforts and his anxieties and his worries and he realized for the first time that God is asking him to do something but he's not doing it by himself because he's being sent. His words, when he opened his mouth and spoke, was the very words of the Holy Spirit coming out of his mouth. The very words that you speak are the very words of the Holy Spirit. The very hugs that you give are the hugs of the Holy Spirit. Come baptize me with your love. Abba, Father, I'm so in love with you. I'm so madly in love with you. This is what happens when people experience the love of the Father in a way that they have never experienced. And here's the thing. Yeah, I I agree. I'm with you. I'm behind you. I'm going to do it. I'm making a new declaration today because I don't know when the next opportunity is coming. So I got time to figure that out. But here's the thing. We are faced with something every single day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every week, every month, every year, whether you're going to the grocery store, the bank, the restaurant, wherever you're going to, you are faced with an opportunity to serve. Generosity is more about the money you give. It's also about how you're serving the world around us, how you're serving the community around us. Amen? Let's stand.